The temple that we wear is a house of prayer, is a house of believing what is denied by the senses. That is, that is our deeper level of our being that we are to commune with in and through prayer. But we have made it a den of thieves by transferring our power to all of these graven images, all of these other things outside of us and expecting those to be the source of our security or our prosperity or our health and wellness. Welcome back to another episode of Daily Neville. I am your host, Josiah Brandt, and Daily Neville is all about breaking down the teachings of Neville Goddard, making them easy to understand, easy to digest, easy to apply in 20 minutes or less. I designed Daily Neville to fit seamlessly into your diet of daily high vibe consciousness nutrition. And I encourage you to join us every single day as we dive deep into these profound, awe-inspiring, life-uplifting ideas. Make this a part of your daily mental diet. Today, we are continuing with Neville's book titled, Your Faith is Your Fortune. And this is the chapter titled, No Other God. Let's go ahead and dive right in. No Other God. I am the first. I am the last. And beside me, there is no God. Isaiah 44, 6. I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt, from the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Deuteronomy 5, 6, and 7. Thou shalt have no other god beside me. As long as man entertains a belief and a power apart from himself, so long will he rob himself of the being that he is. Every belief in powers apart from himself, whether good or evil, will become the mold of the graven image worshipped. We're going to start right there. The mold of the graven image worshipped. Over and over again in these teachings by Neville, we are asked, we are invited, we are exhorted to examine the ways in which we transfer the creative power that we are, the creative power of our source, to graven images to graven images. And that what I mean by graven images is images made by human hands. How many times do we take something that is not the source, but a derivative of the source or the offspring of the source and attribute it to it the power that in truth belongs to I am? This is creating a false god or a graven image or worshiping a graven image. And as Neville is talking about here, thou shalt have no other god beside me. Our god, I am, is a jealous God. I am is a jealous God. And if you sit with that statement, I am, the I that I am, my source is a jealous God. My source is a jealous creator. What does that mean? If you sit in the silence with this thought, I am is a jealous God, you begin to understand that everything in your reality cascades from I am. And when you and I, in our human ignorance, take what is the offspring and attribute it to the to it the power of the source we are in effect stealing or robbing ourselves of the power that we are now this can happen in ways both obvious and subtle but the i that i am is a jealous god and we honor the source that is the source of all of our consciousness the source which is awareness itself by being aware of where the power comes from and choosing to hold that power, choosing to honor that power, choosing to assert that power with wisdom. Using Neville's words, the belief in the potency of drugs to heal, diets to strengthen, monies to secure, are the values or money changers that must be thrown out of the temple. And then a man can unfailingly manifest that quality. This is the understanding that you need in order to throw out the money changers from the temple. You are the temple of the living God, a temple made without hands. It is written, my house shall be called of all nations a house of prayer, 
but you have made it a den of thieves. Now, as we know from season two of Daily Neville, prayer is defined as the art of believing what is denied by the senses. And prayer is a sacred art. It is a mystic art. It is a sacred art. And when you exercise the sacred art of prayer, you are communing with a deeper level of your being, which is source itself, a source awareness, the source of all power. Now, when you take that power and you transfer it to things that are made with human hands, such as diets or pills or money, and you expect those things to manifest that quality for you, basically what you are doing is you are entertaining money changers in the temple of the living God. And as we all know, this is a story from the Bible about Jesus casting out the money changers from the temple. And it is an allegory of this principle that we're diving into right now. It's who, who's holding this power? Are we going to assume that our source is the power, that I am is the power? Or are we going to assume that there's something outside of us that is responsible for the world in which we live? This is the pearl of great price. You can't serve two masters. You can't hold your own power and expect others, whether that be ideas or people or things or authorities, to hold it for you. You have to choose the master that you're going to serve. And what Neville is saying here, you know, you are the temple of the living God, a temple made without hands. My house shall be called a house of prayer. This temple, the temple that we wear, is a house of prayer, is a house of believing what is denied by the senses. That is, that is our deeper level of our being that we are to commune with in and through prayer. But we have made it a den of thieves by transferring our power to all of these graven images, all of these other things outside of us and expecting those to be the source of our security or our prosperity or our health and wellness. Neville continues, the thieves who rob you are your own beliefs. It is your power in a thing and not the thing itself that aids you. There is only one power. I am he. There is only one power. It's you. It is your I am. That is the only power. Your awareness itself is the only power. Because of your belief in external things, you think power into them or transfer power to them by transferring the power that you are to the external thing. Realize you yourself are the power that you have mistakenly given to outer conditions. The Bible compares the opinionated man to the camel who could not go through the needle's eye. The needle's eye referred to as a small gate in the walls of Jerusalem, which was so narrow that a camel could not go through it until relieved of its pack. The rich man which is the one who is burdened with false human concepts, cannot enter the kingdom of heaven until relieved of his burden any more than could the camel go through this small gate. Man feels so secure in his man-made laws, opinions, and beliefs that he invests them with an authority that they do not possess. Satisfied that his knowledge is all, he remains unaware that all outward appearances are but states of mind externalized. When he realizes that, the consciousness of a quality externalizes that quality without the aid of any other, he establishes the one true value, his own consciousness. So the question here is, do I value the pills that I expect to make me well, more than I value my own I am consciousness? It's just a question. It's just a question. Can I imbue pills with the power that I am? Of course I can. It helps to be aware that that's what I'm doing. It helps to be aware that I am transferring the power that I am through my belief in the efficacy of the things in which I believe. 
And by transferring power to those things, they do have the power to assist me or to help me. But don't place the power, the source of the power with those things. Place the source of that power in its correct place. I am. I am the source of the power. And then if you choose to, you can imbue things with your power. But the call to action here is to not do it ignorantly. Don't ignorantly transfer power to external things. Don't ignorantly give away the most valuable thing you possess, your creative power, and attribute it to things outside of yourself, external circumstances, external conditions, external people, places, things. Retain your power. And then, having put right things in the right place, first things first, then you can choose to imbue things with your power with full awareness that that is what you're doing. That's the call here. Don't do it ignorantly. Do it with wisdom, if you do it at all. Continuing with Neville's words, the Lord is in his holy temple. Consciousness dwells within that which it is conscious of being. I am human is the Lord, I am, and his temple, human. Knowing that consciousness objectifies itself, man must forgive all men for being that which they are. He must realize that all are expressing, without the aid of another, that which they are conscious of being. Peter, the enlightened or disciplined man, knew that a change of consciousness would produce a change of expression. Instead of sympathizing with the beggars of life at the temple's gate, he declared, Silver and gold have I none for thee. But such as I have, the consciousness of freedom, give I unto thee. So this is the allegory of Peter, who is the enlightened one or the disciplined man, who says, essentially, yes, I could give you gold and silver, and you would be healed for a moment. Or I could give you the consciousness of freedom, and you'll be healed for forever. That's what that Bible story is. The silver and gold have I none for thee, but what I do have I give to thee. What I do have is the consciousness of freedom, and that I give to thee because it sets you free for forever. Stir up the gift within you. Stop begging. Claim yourself to be that which you decide to be. Do this, and you too will jump from your crippled world into the world of freedom, singing praises to I am, which is the Lord. Far greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Far greater is the consciousness, the I am, the source that is within you, that is being you, that is playing the part of you, than he, the external consciousness objectified, the external world, the offspring that is in the world. This is the cry of everyone who finds his awareness of being to be God. Your recognition of this fact will automatically cleanse the temple. Your temple is your consciousness, that which you live within. You live within your state of being. You live within your state of consciousness. And your recognition of this fact, that the I that I am is greater in me than that which is in the world, that cleanses the temple, the consciousness of the thieves and robbers, restoring to you the dominion over things which you lost the moment that you forgot the command, thou shalt have no other God beside me. What a chapter. What a chapter. No other God. What a chapter. What a call to action. What a call to review the ways in which we are transferring our power outside of ourselves. What an invitation to reclaim that power. What an invitation to begin to respect the only power. Empower noble power. That's something that we all have the opportunity to express when we become aware of these truths. We can empower the only noble power, that is the power that is within. This idea alone, explored in this chapter, 
changes the entire world, starting with you and I. When we master this idea, when we become master of our own consciousness and stop transferring power to another, that begins the cascade. It begins the ripple effect until the entire world is remade. It is an enlightened understanding of consciousness and of who I am is. Thank you for joining me for this episode of Daily Neville. I invite you to sit with these questions, sit with these ideas, allow them to begin to transform from the inside out your awareness of your own power and who you are. Imagine wisely, my friends, and I'll see you all tomorrow.